Welcome to Words From My Face. On tonight's show, we're talking about the new Doom Project. We're talking Marvel Studios' Kevin Feige and his plans for the Marvel Universe, and the Simpsons slash Futurama slash Family Guy crossover. Stay tuned. <laughs> Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Think though, Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. going on everybody welcome to words from my face my name is brian with me as always producer extraordinaire brendan yo and we are the one and only home of the chewbacca chainsaws <laughs> that was more of a frantic look by brendan there because uh, chewbacca is not currently staying with me he's staying with brendan so you're always a little suspicious that he's it's right very over tough your shoulder. right now yeah uh it, it, it can be it can be rough it can be rough so Salute to you, because Chewbacca, I mean, me and him, we're boys, but, I mean, he never cleans out the drain after a shower. I mean, he, he when he shaves, he leaves all the hair in the sink. It's just, it gets to be too much sometimes. I'm honestly more concerned about the chainsaws. Uh, I mean, no, but he's pretty handy with those. I was like, Chewbacca, we need a door here. He's like, not a problem. Z -z 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 done. And he's, he's pretty handy with it. And I don't have to worry about anybody trying to break in through that door because Chewbacca's here, so... Yeah, you can just leave open doors all over your house. And when I talk about open doors, I mean, like, no doors in the place, just open. Nobody comes yeah, so in. Yeah, well, so it is definitely um, very comforting for external safety. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the problem is the internal threats. Yeah, um, sometimes he can get a little moody. And yeah, with that chainsaw revving, like, all day and night. I mean, I got some got some, some, some chillins around that are, you know... Um, not too happy about these chainsaws. Yeah, not and big fans of it, huh? Not big fans of it. I think they're a little bit scared. Yeah, I can um. imagine. <laughs> yeah, he's eight foot tall, rookie. I mean, come on, that, that's a scary thing. But, yeah, so tonight we got coming at you. It, it's another entertainment show. It is Monday night, so this is kind of what we do every Monday. And we've been doing this for the past, like, what, three months? Well, yeah, we got like a three month anniversary, so. Right? Yeah. That's about, about it. Close enough to it, but uh, so <laughs> hope you've been enjoying the show the whole time. And tonight, like I said in the intro, we are talking about Marvel Studios' Kevin Feige, his plans for the Marvel Phase 3. Uh, we're talking about the Simpsons slash Futurama slash Family Guy crossover. That's going to be an interesting one. And uh, talking about the new Doom Project, it in Bethesda. I believe Bethesda absorbed id. And so they were talking about that a little bit ago, so... Yeah, we'll jump into that, but let's start it off the same way I started off every week, and that's with the horrible movie of the blah 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 the blah 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 <laughs> that is actually Brendan laughing. If you didn't know, that's not a just a recorded sound bite. That's him laughing. That's how he laughs in real life. So yeah, it's pretty mani maniacal, pretty maniacal. But yeah, so this week, um, it was kind of a surprise. Now, Scott, you got me a bunch of movies to watch. I promise you, I will get them to get to them. But I, I found out that I was watching a horrible movie when I didn't quite intend to watch a horrible movie. So, uh, yeah. Uh, this week I watched Congo. Now, this is a movie I've never seen. Uh, it was a movie that came out when I was a little kid and I always wanted to see, but being eight years old when it came out, not really allowed to watch that type of movie. Nope. Yeah. Sad, Brian is sad, or was uh, it a, actually a good thing for you? It was probably a good thing. Actually, I bet you I would have loved it when I was a kid. <laughs> I bet you I would have been like, oh, it's the greatest movie ever. And then it wouldn't have held up. But yeah, so Congo was from back in 1993. Now this movie um, was a Michael Crichton book, and that was in the height of every Michael Crichton book ever 
was being made into a movie. And this movie was directed by Michael Fallon or Fallow or something like that. I uh, should have written down his name, but he was the protege to Steven Spielberg, or that's what people thought. And then he did this movie, and they're like, wait, we were wrong. <laughs> keep being assistant director. That's where you're better, at least under Steven Spielberg. So, yeah, let's just kind of jump right into it. So, um, yeah, it's about a team that goes to the Congo, of course, uh, to find these diamonds for this, like, diamond laser communication device, which, yeah, now nowadays it just seems silly. <laughs> but I guess back then people were like, oh, that might actually work. Like, sweet, dude, like, satellites are brand new. What the heck? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, satellites have been around for a little while now. No, they were brand new back then in 1993. Brand new. Yeah, 1950s, buddy. Brand new in 1993. There's no such thing as Sputnik. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right. That was yeah, actually so... the whole basis of the movie uh, Toy Story 2, that, that Sputnik ruined everything in the 1950s, right? Uh, it's so. possible. It's possible. You know, but uh, yeah. So um, yeah. So they send a team down there. Of course, the team mysteriously disappears, and they need to send another team. And they don't want to make it look. And this is a communications company, and they don't want to make it look suspicious. So they find some guy who's already going to the Congo. It just so happens he's taking his talking ape to the Congo. Uh, <laughs> Where else would you take a talking ape? Like, seriously. <laughs> I guess that's true. The Congo is the best place to go. And now, uh, when I say talking ape, it does sign language, and it, they created some device that can read its sign language and, and make it talk. So it's So it's not like quite like the uh, the new Dawn of the Planet of the Apes movie. Yeah, or they're not talking like that. It's just, they're again, he's doing sign language. It's it's really stupid, to be honest with you. It just doesn't make much sense. But let's let's get into some of the, the things I hated most about this movie. So, Bruce Campbell's actually in this movie for about five minutes. And when you see Bruce Campbell and it's a B-movie, you're like, hey, this movie actually has some hope because Bruce Campbell is usually just kind of fun. He plays up those B-movies pretty darn well. And they still are usually entertaining. Well, they killed him off in the first ten minutes of the movie. So all hope was lost from there. But one of my favorite lines in the movie, which happened within the first 10 minutes, was uh, he's on site in the Congo, and they go, how's the volcano? And he goes, very much like a volcano. And that, that was like his scientific insight. So, yeah. yeah you can and see that's the, the best line of the whole movie. That's the best line of the whole movie. You can see where, where it's going to go down. And um, they introduced the laser gun I was talking about, uh, the diamond laser gun. Uh, really early on, and you don't quite understand why they're not using it the whole time. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah. Those diamond um, laser guns are expensive, Brian. You don't want to wear those out. Clearly. It's true. It's true. Di they, they are pretty expensive. Well, and, if you look and diamonds at just the... are so fragile. Yeah. They really are. They don't, they don't last yeah. very long. They don't they, last They, they, they don't last forever. They don't, they don't. <laughs> they don't. Diamonds are not forever. I don't know where that sound, that movie got it from, but mm -mm, not forever. But yeah, so uh, there's a smoking monkey in it, and I guess if you're going to have a monkey as one of the main characters, you might as well make them smoke. Um, cause so, that's, okay, that's so there's a talking stuff. ape and a smoking monkey. Well, the talking ape is the smoking monkey. I will here for refer to all why, apes why is as he monkeys. A monkey when he's smoking and an ape when he's talking, Brian. I will refer to all apes from now on as monkeys. How about that? <laughs> Except for if I call them apes. If I say monkey at any time, I mean ape. And if I say ape, I mean ape. So that's just how the movie movie is going to go from here on. Just got to set down a key, you know. Uh, yeah, so... Get your um, story straight. <laughs> They, so they arrive in the Congo, or right outside the Congo, and if you know anything about the Congo, that is not called the Congo anymore. It's been called like 15 different things because they've had like 25 of these different brutal regime changes, and it's pretty bad. Uh, for some reason in the movie, they think it's funny to mock genocide, so that was a thing. Um, at one yeah. point, the, the main one of the main characters gets a leech stuck to his private parts, and he, instead of ripping it off like every other normal human being would do, he, like, leaves it there for a while and is like, oh, help me, help me, help me. It's like, no, dude, help yourself, man. Come on. Come on. Maybe he's afraid to, like, tear everything out. I'd be kind uh, of afraid of that. Yeah, I'd rather just get it off. How about that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Not if it tears everything off. Not if it, like, rips you know, out your veins there. I mean, if you rip it off, you, you, I mean, come on. You'd know it wouldn't tear everything off. You, we've seen leeches before. Leeches aren't These anything are Congo new. leeches, Brian. Congo leeches. You never know about the Congo leeches. Um, yeah, and so this is about halfway through the movie, and I'm wondering to myself, 
this is a movie about some gorillas slash apes slash monkeys. Okay, I will also call them gorillas. Um, <laughs> that go nuts and kill everybody. And yet, I have not really seen it yet. So I was kind of disappointed at this point. They kind of shadow showed apes kill people, but didn't really. So it's like, come on, let's let's get to the, the apes killing people. Is this supposed to be a comedy movie? Um, there was some funny parts. Not but intentionally was it funny. Supposed to be a comedy movie. No, it wasn't supposed to. But because it doesn't of... sound like a serious movie so far. Like you're 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 talking smoking monkey, going into the Congo with leeches on guys' privates, and it volcanoes. And Bruce I don't know. Campbell. Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. He do very serious movies. Like he he does do cameos in half serious movies. Yeah, but this ah. this was meant to be a serious, like, suspenseful movie, and it was just not hitting the mark in any way, shape, or form. Um, at one point in the middle of the movie, they start singing Mamas and Papas, and uh, the, all the leaves are falling. You know that song? Okay, hold on. Now, I don't... We just had this discussion. Are you sure this is not meant to be a comedy movie? This is this is not a comedy. You'll break this... out into singing Mamas and Papas in the middle of a serious movie. Yeah, and um, um, for some reason, the like they're with a whole bunch of African guides and stuff, but everybody in this group of like twenty people knows this song, and they all like sing it word for word, and it's like, um, That's Mamas an old and song. Papas weren't that popular here, let alone worldwide. I would say, like that song came out in the '60s. I can't name three people. I probably can't name three people. I can't name four people <laughs> who know how to know all the words of that song. So Brian, that, that was, was like the greatest song in the '60s. Everyone knows that song. I actually, no, no I, I I like that song. I think that is one of the better songs of the '60s. So I don't know what you're talking about. But all right, people sing it right now, word for word. They know that song. Sing it right now, word for word. All the leaves are brown. All the leaves are brown, and the and sky is all right, gray. All right, first, first, first of all, it's all the leaves are fallen. So you d- womp yourself. No, the brown. Womp yourself. Womp yourself. <laughs> We're gonna go roll back the tape later. Womp yourself. <laughs> See, thank you for proving my point so uh, so so brilliantly for me. So yeah. So except for I knew it so well that I could even mess it up, but I knew it. Yeah. So. Like the thing that people know is like it's California Dreaming. Yeah, that Watch is the- Cal- California Dreaming. That's the name of the song. So. But that was an interesting choice of a song to be singing in the middle of the jungle, I thought, because, like, the leaves don't fall in the jungle. Um, you know, just... They kind of do, uh, eventually. Well, eventually, but, like, they... Not, not, not for the winter, not for the yeah. fall or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So, but, yeah, and um, probably the best part they, of the movie... Oh, wait, 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 was, no, no, now it makes sense. There's a bunch of rabid, killing, intelligent apes going around. Of course the leaves are going to fall. They're being destroyed by killer apes. But again, again, we have not seen any apes so far in this movie except for the one talking ape. So, And this is, I mean, I'm literally like, we're more than halfway through. At one point I checked the time and I was like, there's only like 20 minutes left in this movie. Where are all the killer monkeys? And it's only like in the last 10 minutes that they show up. So, but um, yeah, so... Probably the biggest villain of the whole movie was hippos because they pop out one time and kill everybody in the, their boats. Well, they don't kill everybody, but they destroy their boats. And hippos are pretty vicious. And that just made me think of, remember when we did our I Frankenstein? You have the bears and Ferraris and gargoyles on elephants. Yep. Apes on hippos. Still needs to be done, by the way. Apes on hippos is the next one. You have those two fight it out. Whoever the winner of those two is, they fight the apes in, on hippos. I Maybe it's like a three, three nation war. Wow. Okay. So it's like Starcraft. You have you have your three yep. nations going together all at once. I like that. I like that. Now, now this can be that. an RTS game, like a successful. Ah, one. Ah, there you go. There you go. Blizzard, go ahead. You know, if you want our idea, we'll give it to you. Just send us a check. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be a, big a check thing. for a substantial amount. Well, that'd be because... nice. But hey, if they send it, well, and. Say created by words from my face on there. Yeah, yeah, do that too. Yeah, because my creating... our idea of and to be fair, our idea of a substantial amount is probably not the, as much as their idea of a substantial amount. So come on, yeah. guys, there's there's not much to lose here. Send me like five dollars, I'll be happy. Actually, I, I want more than five. I want at least five hundred. Okay, so Blizzard, you know, I'll, I'll take the other five million. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I don't know about this split here. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, um, and uh, let's see, other horrible things. 
Um, yeah, there's really only one monkey fighting scene, which kind of is annoying. Um, finally, they, they get their hands when the monkeys start fighting them on this diamond laser gun, and, like, it's, like, the most ruthless gun ever. It, like, just cuts all these monkeys in half, and it's like, how did you ever lose? Because the other guys had the diamond monkey laser gun up and running before, so it's like, how do you ever lose to these monkeys? All you need is a diamond laser gun. Come on, people. Come on. And... That's actually a solution to most of life's problems in the Congo, anyway, is your diamond laser gun is going to solve it. Diamond laser gun. That's that's what I'm saying. World peace, diamond laser gun. What up? Call it the words <laughs> from my face. Diamond laser gun monkey shooter. There you go. Make up a cool acronym with that and send it to us. That'd be cool. Um, and, yeah, so at the very, very end of the movie, of course, there's a giant l- diamond that has to feed uh, this diamond laser gun, and the main woman character pulls it out, and the guy throws it away. And honestly, this was the biggest diamond I've ever seen, probably worth like $40 million. I was thinking, why would you throw away such a laser? Why not just... I mean, why would you throw away such a diamond? Why not keep it? Why not set up like an ape, you know, like preserve or something like that with all that money? But no, they throw it away. But yeah, so that was the horrible movie of the week. And again, that was not a movie I meant to be a horrible movie of the week. I was actually hoping I'd enjoy it. But I didn't, so I give that one uh, two Chewbacca chainsaws out of five. Don't worry. Don't worry, Scott. I did get your list from last week, and I will be jumping into some of those next week. But if you have a horrible movie of the week you'd like me to watch and torture me with, go ahead and send it to at Words My Face on Twitter or comments down below or wordsmartface at gmail.com, or Google+, Plus or Facebook. And if you notice, I'm never too thrilled about getting horrible movies of the week because they suck. They do. But I do it anyway, because I love you guys. That's why. Brendan never does it. He doesn't love you. I I have done it. Once. once. <laughs> I did not. Nah. All right. <laughs> he did do it. He did do it. He did watch a horrible movie of the week, so, nah. But now that we're done talking about horrible movies... Let's talk about some good movies. Well, hopefully good movies. And that is the Marvel Universe. Uh, Kevin Feige recently sat down with IGN at the at uh, a pre-conference, pre-press conference junket, I would imagine, uh, because Guardians of the Galaxy is coming out next week, August 1st. And uh, he kind of gave a little bit of details on how they're planning on making the Marvel Universe, cinematic universe at least, work over the next couple of years in their Phase 3 and probably on to Phase 4. And what I found interesting about this is now they have seven untitled releases between now uh, and 2019. Three of those, They do have three titled releases, which is going to be uh, Avengers 2, Age of Ultron. Then after that, you have Ant-Man. And then in 2016, you're supposed to have Captain America 3. Now, what Kevin Feige added to this little formula is that they're possibly going to do this uh, in a way where they have one sequel a year and one new character a year. So, like next year, you have Avengers 2, Age of Ultron, and then you have the Ant-Man. So they're going to start releasing more and more and more characters to go with this. And now he said this is kind of because if you look at the early comics of the Avengers, especially the comics, they are known for changing the roster all the time. I mean, you could pick up a comic, uh, Avengers comic in the 60s, and then pick up an Avengers comic in the 70s and not recognize almost any of the same characters because they were just a rotating cast of heroes. And Mm -hmm. I kind of think this is pretty cool because this kind of expands out the universe, which is what we've all wanted to see from these universes. Yeah, I mean, it seems pretty cool to me um, for for a lot of reasons. One, it's giving us an idea of what to expect. Like, there's not just rumor mill of this is when the next big movie's coming out. He's he's laying it down. It's kind of like what the a lot of the, the video game industry for the bigger games have gotten to. Mm-hmm. You have a, um, a yearly release of the big series, right? But... You know, maybe you have different groups working on different stuff. So you'll have people working on the mainline sequels, someone working on the new property. I, I guess Marvel Studios must be getting huge. Huge. Well, Marvel novelty. Studios, when it got absorbed by Disney, I mean that. That's they, true. They got That's all true. of Disney's resources, and so that just ballooned them out. I mean, Disney has their hand in like everything, so uh, that 
definitely didn't hurt them. Um, yeah, there. but it, but it's still being these movies are still being handled under the, the Marvel studio, like mm-hmm. right. Uh, at least I hope they are. Well, except for like um, Ant Man, we heard about Disney kind of meddling in Ant Man, so who knows really what they're doing now? Disney, I, that's I think it would be smarter for them. They if they're in the business of making money, so if you want to make a lot of money, let these creative people that have already made a lot of money on it keep being creative. Uh, so you know, I mean, like they were smart. They brought in Joss Whedon to do the Avengers. I think that was a, a great move. And if you saw that one, that one grossed over a billion dollars in the box office. So, ching, that one worked. Yeah, but Disney might have some other motivations. Like, I think Disney's really big in getting, like, all those external, um, like, merchandising, all that merchandising money. Oh, so the they, toys they and probably, stuff? Yeah, so they probably um, do in post or whatever they do. They probably um, push things to make sure that they can secure that merchandising. I don't know, but but, but whatever. We'll, we'll see what happens. But that that's also a good point. This is happening, this, like... This, it's cool to know what to expect, but it is kind of a rigid schedule that we're now seeing. Um, and I guess the question is also going to be, what's going to be the quality of it? Um, yeah. When you don't have that set schedule, when you can push things back, when you're just making movies on a looser plan and seeing when where things are ready, um, then you know, hope it's worked out well. I mean, they haven't. Yeah, been I mean, the Marvel movies. Universe. I'm trying to think of one of the bad movies out of the Marvel Universe recently, and I, I can't really think of anything. I mean, it's been pretty solid, especially There's been some, a few mediocre ones, but well, yeah, not, like the, not bad. The, first, the first Thor was kind of mediocre. Um, the second Thor was better, though. I thought it lot, had a lot more Thorness to it. I guess is the word. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, the Avengers was awesome. I thought it was it was good all the way through. Uh, but I mean, they the do have movie seven... was like it was okay. Well, I don't think that was a was that a Disney? Yeah, that was definitely a Marvel one. That's true. Yeah, that was just um, Marvel. With Edward was Norton. Marvel. I thought the Edward Norton version was way better than the one with Eric Bana, which was horrible. So um, yeah, that that uh, improved. But what are we gonna see from these seven untitled ones? Uh, I mean, how many? Of course, uh, half of them are gonna be sequels, obviously, but half of them are gonna be new characters to see. Like, what are some of these new characters we're gonna see? Uh, I think we might see, you know, after Ant Man, probably a Black Widow movie. Scarlett Johansson saying has been saying that she thinks Black Widow should get her own standalone movie. I think that'd be a cool. I mean, of course, to watch. she's gonna say that, but I, well, I don't she know. wants her money. But <laughs> I don't know. If but that's is that uh, false? I think she's well, done a good job with that character. That, that weird territory, like Marvel has the ability to use Scarlet, Scarlet Witch, and um, and Quicksilver. But remember, those are the characters that they're they're sharing with um, with who is it? Uh, Fox on that or Sony with the yeah, X Men yeah, franchise? Fox with the the, the X Men franchise. So, but yeah, I mean that'd be cool though to see like a team up movie. I don't know how you do that. You'd have to root them somewhere else because. In the comics, they are Magneto's kids, so um, who knows how they're going to quite do that. But that would be a pretty cool team-up movie because Quicksilver will be in the new one. I don't know if Scarlet Witch is going to be, or she. I know she's been rumored to be in the new one, but I'm not 100% sure on that. If she's gonna either be way, known. to be honest, I mean, as we've said before, Marvel has a lot of characters to go through. Yeah. They they're not struggling for for characters to look for. Uh, no. Minor characters, even big characters. Yeah. Um, like you were I mean, saying, and, the Avengers switched out so often. Uh, yeah. Just the and that's just the Avengers, and they have so so many other um, comics around that have been tapped, and they're willing to go into the ones that are a little less known. Like Ant Man's not not a hugely known, uh, but he was a big hero. part of the Avengers for a while, so that's uh, kind of yeah. why I think they're rolling him in there. And yeah. we'll probably see Wasp in there somewhere because uh, that those two are kind of linked together at the hip, usually with most of the comics. So we'll see that. Um, I'd be interested. Is Blade Hawk back yet? Blade. Uh, I don't think they got Blade back. I think that's still... I'm not sure who that's with. I think that might be 20th Century Fox, so I don't know if they'll get that It's been a while since there's been a Blade movie, so... And Uh, and that third Blade movie was kind of disappointing, so... Yeah, that's why I'm kind of thinking maybe they... Maybe that was abandoned, or maybe maybe sometime in that seven-year span, anyway, it should be if they don't make another Blade movie. It'll be freed up. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see a Blade movie by Marvel, anyway, or Blade teaming up in some of these movies. 
And one of the titles that we know will be one of these seven untitled movies uh, due to be released before 2019 will be Doctor Strange. And another cool thing Kevin Feige was talking about that is there is a possibility that one or two of these movies might be in their own standalone universes. So it won't be kind of the crossover tie-in. They might just give them their own universe to play with. And Doctor oh. Strange, since he's more of the mystical part of the superhumans, um, that would be interesting. So that gets us back to a little term that I was coining up, and I'm surprised no one's using it. We're going to soon see the the Marvel movie multiverse. There you go. The mo- Marvel movie multiverse. Because, wait, no, was it them that had the mu- multiverse, or was that uh, was that DC? They both had multiverses. And you're just talking about having their own, like, people with their own universes, the multiple universes in Marvel that they're going to be showing in movies now. So there you go. Sounds like a, that sounds like a multiverse to me. You know, that'll be pretty interesting. But, you know, what are some of the characters you'd like to see in some of the next Marvel movies? Do you think this is a good idea? Too many sequels? uh, Planning too much far in advance is not always the best thing for movies, but... Uh, I don't know. Let us know what you think. Uh, hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter. Words My Face at Google. Gmail.com. Google Plus, of course. And Facebook. Let us know what you think. And, uh, yeah, we'd like to see some other characters because, like we mentioned, there's, there's like, the Hulk. There's He might get a reboot. Hawkeye, all them. But and there's a bunch of other missing. major other characters that aren't necessarily heroes that haven't showed up. Like, we haven't seen anything with Beyonder yet, I don't think, right? Mm-hmm. So... So, yeah, so tell us who we're missing. Let us know. Uh, I'd love to hear uh, some of your your guesses on who this the new untitled films will be. So, yeah. But let's move it on to uh, the TV part of the show, and that is The Simpsons. Has, is This December is releasing a Futurama slash Simpsons crossover, and this September is releasing a Family Guy slash Simpsons crossover. And then Al Jean, the producer of said... Uh, Well, he was the producer of Futurama. That has been ended. Uh, But he's still the producer of The Simpsons. uh, Has said that there's a possibility that they might bring all three franchises together. Uh, And I just found that very, very interesting. Because these are three of Fox's best-known, longest-running shows. I mean, I can't think of any Fox TV show that has run even... I mean, there's not many TV shows in general that have run as long as The Simpsons but been as successful for them. Fox seems to be the channel that you go to to watch cartoons, um, whereas like ABC and NBC, you'll, you'll go to watch people live-action dramas. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, and so I, I, I'm just I'm just curious about how they're going to do this, because since they've already planned uh, The Family Guy and Simpsons one, which I was reading about that, and that sounds really cool, because Al Jean said pretty much the uh, Family Guy guys were the ones... That's weird to say, Family Guy guys. I feel like I'm... In South Park. I'm not a Family Guy guy. That's not me. Did you ever see that South Park episode? I did see that South Park episode. The manatees pick the... Pick, all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, um, uh, so, so the Family Guys... Yeah, that's how I'll say it from now on. The Family Guys are going to be... They're the ones really running this whole thing uh, for the Simpsons slash Family Guy crossover. So it's going to be actually a one-hour episode. It's going to be the season premiere of Family Guy this September. And uh, it's pretty cool because Al Jean said, really, out of the whole script... Now, Family Guy gets a little bit more risque than Simpsons usually does, so there's a little bit of boundaries there. I guess they didn't want to cross too much. And there was one part where Al Jean, uh, or one of the producers of the Family Guy show, said, eh, um, Al Jean asked us to remove, like, three lines out of the whole thing or soften them up. And uh, they were like, wow, that's pretty nice. You know, they're not really trying to put their hands in our mix too much. They're letting us really run with it. And he was like, uh, Al Jean, the, the biggest thing he wanted us to do was cut out some of the rape jokes. And we were like, no. And he was like, well... I tried. <laughs> so we're going to we're gonna see a very interesting uh, Family Guy Simpsons episode. And I wonder how they're going to do it. Are they going to keep the Simpsons yellow and with three fingers? Yeah, I'm also wondering um, which which show is it going to be on? Is it going to be on just it's gonna like be its a family special? Guy. Or it's going to be a Family Guy episode. Out? It will be a Family Guy episode. So I imagine it's going to be the Simpsons in the Family Guy animation and everything like that. So... Uh, it's just going to be pretty cool. I mean, those are two... I mean, Simpsons, to be honest with you, they're going on year 26, I believe. Uh, they're really ready to die. Um, they've been ready to die for the past, like, 15 years, but they've been kept Honestly, afloat. I think that they uh, they hit their peak, like, when they did their movie. 
And after the movie, it was just like, hey, I think they were even thinking to themselves, hey, you know what? What we've we've accomplished all we've ever wanted to accomplish. We have a movie now. Mm-hmm. We put everything into that. We're we're done. You know, whatever. Yeah, I even, we're think, just doing I even think the show on TV was already done before the movie came out. But the movie actually, I thought was pretty entertaining. So, but I thought the show had already been, you know, let's let it go away. It should have been the movie was the end of the whole series. I think that would have wrapped it up very nicely. Then you can still do these crossover things, but. Who knows? Yeah. But. yeah, although this is kind of an interesting uh, setup because, yeah, you know, I don't think there's any question that Family Guy got its initial chance because it was set up very similar to The Simpsons, and you know The Simpsons had done so well. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, now you're seeing really the pioneers of this. Yeah, and so now you're seeing Family Guy get pay that um that homage to to The Simpsons and incorporate them in and see. And get that crossover going. I mean, obviously they're they're not competitive with each other. They've always been on the same station with each other anyway. They usually run back to back. One leads into the other, so that's you know they actually helped each other more than hurt each other. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it'll be kind of interesting to see what they what they do with it. Um, that that's that though. Uh, but I'm kind of more interested in to, in that next crossover you were talking the, about, the future guy, uh, Futurama and Simpsons crossover. I think that'll be a better one. And apparently that's gonna, since Futurama is canceled now, and I, I don't want to say canceled. I want to say they canceled just brought again? it to an end. Yeah, they brought it to an end um, last year, I believe. And um, I think it's so. What's gonna happen is it will be a Simpsons episode. So I bet it's gonna be the Futurama people coming to the Simpsons timeline which will be interesting because a lot of those characters kind of mirror each other. Like, Fry is kind of Homer. Um, Bender is almost Bart, you know. <laughs> like So it'll be interesting it, to see how those characters react. A little bit. But I mean, yeah, those, I mean Futurama's, the basic outline of those characters are mirrors of each other. I think that's a little agree bit... Agree with argument. me. Just agree with me. Just agree. Just agree. Only, like, maybe... Only yeah, just agree. Just very agree. small amount, like... No, 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 no. They're, they're not like each other. Like, it's not a mirror. <laughs> just agree. Just agree with what I it's say. It's actually surprising how different Futurama... Like, if they had some of the same humor, but how different Futurama was in style from The Simpsons was, was well, always I, pretty I know awesome. A lot of people who love The Simpsons and hate Futurama or hate The Simpsons and love Futurama. I mean, it, it's it's very weird. I personally liked Futurama a little bit more than The Simpsons. Oh, I and, definitely like Futurama more. I, I like so, The Simpsons. I like The Simpsons yeah. just fine, but I definitely like Futurama more. Yeah, um, so. Had a little bit more to it, uh, I thought. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I I agree. I agree. It just had a, a little bit more depth to it. It was just a little more fun. It was a little more lighthearted, I'd say, too, uh, than The Simpsons was. But neither one of those shows was really heavy. I mean, there are cartoons, so <laughs> you know. I mean, well, it, hey, not that big of a Futurama difference. though did have some of the like saddest shows on television ever. Yeah, it did. I cried a couple times. The dog episode. The dog episode, or the episode where Fry found out that uh, his brother didn't steal his seven leaf clover. Yeah, the, the nephew episode. Yeah, that one. That was gave it to his nephew and then named his nephew after Fry. I thought that was a good episode. Uh, um, the God episode. I don't know. You remember where they're looking for uh, Bender's lost in space? I thought that was yeah. a pretty cool episode. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> you know. so, like they had all that comedy, and that was why the uh, like the ridiculous comedy, which I loved, right? Absurd stuff going on, and then they would throw in these. Episodes episodes that you weren't expecting to, to hit so hard. And probably they're more impactful because you were expecting this, this this stupid comedy thing. And then they're like, oh man, that's that's sad. Like or, <laughs> that oh, hey, you. that's you know that's thought provoking there. Yeah. yeah that's why I love Futurama is because it it was always coming out of left field. It was de- definitely again it was a lighter show, but it, it had a little more depth to it than some of those other cartoons do and some of the other cartoons do now. And uh, and they could do more ridiculous TV. stuff because it wasn't tied as much to reality because, you know, it's a thousand years in the future where they have all kinds of weird technology and they think that all of our assumptions are stupid. Like, whatever. They're, they just do whatever they want. Mm-hmm. Good times. I mean, good times. So Presidents and, that are just talking and, and into the jar? All, like, whatever. <laughs> but then to have all three of those franchises kind of come together into one um, might be pretty cool, too. Uh, seeing, like, Bender interact with Peter or something like that, you know, so... Uh, you know, they got big plans for these franchises. Even though Futurama is kind of gone, it's it's still in our hearts and minds. Ooh, I think they're all, all of them are at this point kind of dying out, though. Like, like Futurama, uh, Family Guy at this point seems to be, it's been also kind of on a downward uh, trend. 
maybe it's in try and keep afloat a little bit by just being shocking. Like that's that seems to be what like hey let's generate you know. buzz about our show by doing next shocking thing right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they, they and like you said, The Simpsons kind of been going downhill for a while and all that. So this might be maybe this will rejuvenate a few of them. Maybe it'll just be a nice last hurrah. Maybe it's just a gimmick to try and milk something out while they while they can. Well, here's me hoping that it's kind of the last hurrah for The Simpsons, and they end out they end on a high note rather than the low notes they've been hitting. And I have read something that they are gonna kill The Simpsons are gonna kill off one of their major characters. Apparently, this voice actor was an Emmy Award winner at one point, so it will be one of their major characters. So hopefully, this is just The Simpsons winding themselves down, not turning into like the soap operas that have been on TV for like 30 years. And the story is, you slept with my twin brother cousin. And now he's an alien. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's one of the major point. characters, like one of the family members. I have no idea. I I don't. They they didn't t- say who, but they said that the it was voiced by an Emmy Award winner. So I, I'm sure all of those guys have won Emmys at one point. They've been on the air for so long. So, but let us know what you think. Are you excited about seeing all these crossovers? What do you think a good plot line would be for one of these? You know, let us know in the comments down below. Of course, at Words for My Face on Twitter, Words for My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus, and as always, Facebook. I'd like to know what you guys think about it. It'd be interesting. So let's move it on to the next stories of the night. All right, that's a hint, Brendan. That's a hint. When I say that stories. Was stories. And that'll be our quick hits of the night. If I can find them. There we go. Okay, so the, for the first quick hit. World of Warcraft, uh, the movie is coming to Comic-Con. So apparently they're going to have a panel. Uh, hopefully show a little bit of a trailer footage because that movie is due out sometime next year, I believe. Um, so I'm interested to see that. Oh, it's a World of Warcraft one, not a Warcraft one? Yeah, I know. I was kind of disappointed about that too. Uh, I think just having a Warcraft where humans are battling the orcs in a giant battle would be better, but it is going to be a World of Warcraft movie. All right. Well, uh, I guess because at this point that's the far more popular thing. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Or, but yeah, so let's move it on to the next quick kid. And that is The Last of Us is getting a one night only uh, stage rendition of The Last of Us. Or did I already say Last of Us? I already did. But that'll be in Los Angeles, uh, I believe, next month. So they're making a play out of a video game. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that's first I've heard of that, but cool. And Last of Us was apparently an awesome game, and I'm waiting to get it until I get my PS4. And then I'm going to get the remastered version on that, and hopefully it'll be just as good as everybody says it is. It better be. (laughs) <laughs> Better be. But let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is FIFA has added uh, an American athlete to the cover, uh, and this is really just for the Americas. Um, Clint Dempsey will be alongside Lionel Messi uh, on the cover. And now this is Lionel Messi's, I believe, fourth year in a row, maybe third year in a row on the cover, so I think they just wanted to spice things up a little bit. It's getting kind of old seeing the same guy. <laughs> on there over and over, and you can't tell which year you bought. So, and Clint Dempsey, that's, that's that's okay. best I don't know if you've heard, but FIFA, or whichever company makes the FIFA games, has EA. been caught a couple times. Yeah, they have been caught um, releasing the exact, exact same game and just the, putting a different year on it. Like... Mm-hmm. And new stats and stuff, yeah. Change the rosters or anything. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the Madden games were like that or anything like that. Because I mean, I mean, how much the Madden games they definitely change the rosters every year. Well, but, yeah, yeah. But yeah. so at, at least they do something, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is Dwayne the Rock Johnson has recently been teasing that he will be teaming up with DC to be a superhero. Now, nobody's quite sure which superhero he was, but recently he was uh, doing a junket somewhere, um, and he teased that he might be a, as powerful as Superman, and it only takes one word to unleash his powers. So... Shazam? Yes, yes at least. Uh, Shazam seems a logical fit for him, but is he going to be both... The small guy and Shazam, or because because Shazam is a kid, right? That transforms into Shazam when he says Shazam, and um, so I'm wondering oh, how they're maybe, gonna play that. Maybe he got older at some point in the comics. I don't know. Yeah, but right. he, he was a kid for a while, so. Yeah, I mean, he he wouldn't be that big and buff all the time unless he can just stay in Shazam form all the time. Because 
believe it's magic that turns him into that powerful of a person. So, yeah. yeah you know who I think would be make a better Shazam? Who's that? Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, so he made the best. Cab- he was a Shazam, wasn't he? He was something. It was something like like a weird like. Kabam magical. or Shazam or Sh- Shakabzam? Shakabzam? <laughs> it might have been. I don't know. Like, I don't remember what that. Yeah, let us know in comments down below. It what was called Shazam? Actually, I think it was Shazam. Yeah, where he was like. But it was a, a different Shazam. He was like a genie Shazam or something. Like yeah, that. and like this little kid was like, "I want candy," and he made candy. Like he almost drowned this kid in candy. Like that. Yeah, it's kind of dangerous. Careful what you wish for from Shakazam. That's what I'm going to call him from now on, Shakazam. Whether that's his real name or not. So, But yeah, let's move it on to the last quick kid of the night. And that is that Planet of the Apes, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, I should say, uh, came in the box office number one again this week with $36 million. That brings its two-week total up to $139. Uh, coming in next was... Pur- the Purge, Anarchy, um, which only cost about $15 million to make, made about $26 million in its first week, so success there already. Then you have Planes, Fire, and Rescue. That was an interesting one, coming in third with $18 million. And rolling up uh, the top four would, was Sex Tape. That was a Cameron Diaz movie with Jason Segal, and everybody thought that was going to be really big, and it totally flopped, only making $15 million, So Only making $15 million? I wish I was making $15 million. Well, but then again, I don't know how much they put into this, so maybe they're making. I bet you they put close to like fifty to hundred million in there, so they got to make up some ground. Yep. Yeah. But I didn't think that movie was gonna be too good anyway, so I wasn't interested in seeing it at least. I did hear uh, Dawn of the Apes was good though. Like I know some people saw it. So. I still do want to see that one myself. I haven't seen that one quite yet. Um, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I think they could have cut out about an hour of that movie, and it would have been better. But I think. That was a setup movie so that this movie could really go off. So well, I was hearing you don't even really need to watch uh, uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes to enjoy Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. They they do a few little short uh, flashbacks, explain what happened, like whatever. Let's get going. Caesar got this chemical in him, and then he gave it to other monkeys. Let's go. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that would be that. Uh, but that was our quick hits of the night. Remake. And that was really close there, Brendan. <laughs> Every time he slashed, he came closer. That's like my move. You just stole my move, man. Like, that's my patented move. Can you patent a move? My copywritten move. Can I copyright a move either? I don't know if I can do any of those things. I you just can't, up. because it's clearly mine. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay, so let's... And I got the Chewbacca Shade Souls behind me this time. That's true. Yeah. Usually he's got my back, and I can talk all the types of trash, but... He is hanging out with you right now, so... Uh, yeah, that is your move, Brendan. I give it to you. <laughs> Relax, buddy. But, uh, yeah, so let's move it on to the last story of the night, and that is our video game segment. Um, and recently, id Software, uh, along with Bethesda, I believe it is owned by Bethesda. It's one of the developers, so Bethesda is the big publisher. It is the... You guys know how that works. What do you think? Um, Hmm? No, that's what I think. I'm pretty sure, though. Um, they've announced uh, that there will be, at this year's QuakeCon, that there will be a new Doom coming out. And it, back in 2008, we heard rumors uh, that Doom 4 had been started in development. And then back in 2011, Bethesda came out and said, hey, you know what? We were working on that Doom 4. Yeah. We're going to scrap the whole thing, start it over. And this is the first time we've heard about what's going on since they've scrapped the old project. And apparently, this new Doom game will just be a reboot of the series, and we'll start you over from uh, Mission 1. So uh, yeah, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, by the way, before people like jump on us... Um, they're not owned by Bethesda. They're owned by. They're now they've been acquired by the company that owns Bethesda that acquired Bethesda a while back. Zenimax. Mm-hmm. So you're you're close. They're not under Bethesda. They're under Zenimax, who Bethesda is also under. So. So it, they're under the same umbrella then. Yeah. Right, so. There you go. But yeah. So I mean, Doom is one of the classic games. A lot of people really. Now, everybody knows Wolfenstein 3D was the first real one of these FPSs, and it was a really cool game. Which was also by id. Um, Yeah, which was also by id. Um, But really, Doom was what kicked off the FPS genre. 
um, as a whole, I, I would say. And that was back in the early 90s, and that was a PC-only game, if I remember correctly, when it no, came no, out. They, yeah, well, when it came out, probably. Um, but it was ported to, like, just everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, everything like, and anything. Yeah, I think there was even, like, a Sega CD port of it. Like that's um, I know there was at crazy. least a Sega 32X, and if you remember the old 32X is the extra thing you'd put oh, on the yeah, top. Yeah. Uh, so there was a Doom 32X, I believe, so... That, that was interesting. But Doom, I mean, it was a pretty cool game. Now, I, I didn't love it when I was a kid, but you know what? I certainly loved everything that it spawned. Uh, now, when Doom kind of fell off the map, you had Quake step in and take over. Again, and I loved game. <laughs> yeah, and I loved Quake. I mean, Quake was the first game that I remember ever playing online multiplayer. And I'm talking back in the mid-90s, playing online yep. multiplayer with that. Yep, uh, Capture the Flag, Quake 2. That was just that was just so good. like I remember playing that too. That was just awesome. Like Quake yeah, Two, was, Captain Flag. It was one of those first arena games, which then Unreal Tournament came through and kind of broke the mold and made that into their own thing. So, uh, but it, it was the start. I mean, you could honestly say we would not have things like the Unreal Engine possibly if Doom didn't start off that whole franchise because the Unreal Engine was developed for Unreal Tournament, um, and where would we be without Doom? I mean, nobody would have been like, uh, yeah, we don't want one of those games. It hasn't worked before. So it, it really was one of the classic games, and I loved the Doom game franchise for the same reason I kind of loved the Wolfenstein, because it wasn't just a straight-up, all right, there's an enemy, I'm going to shoot him, you're dead. There was an exploration factor to it, kind of eh, harkened to some of the Zelda games. You had to go through, find secret passages, different little special items you could get here and there. They definitely still incorporated bosses. Yeah. What was that? It wasn't a super easy game either. Yeah. Oh, no. No, that, that game was hard. And I remember it was the first one of the first times I really could type in cheats, and everybody remembers uh, God Mode, and where you just hit God Mode in there, type God Mode in there, and it was just like, hey, sweet, I can destroy everything. And that was a lot of fun. But Doom, it, they're, they're coming back, and the last time we really saw Doom, I want to say, was actually the Doom movie. And that was, I think I said Dune. I meant Doom movie, and that was with The Rock. So that was one of his first for, forays. Hmm. Hmm. My speaking language ain't so good right now. But yeah, Doom 3 came out in 2004, so it's been 10 years. Yeah, right? so... 10 years since the, since the last... Uh, of well, the Doom, Doom the movie, when did that come out? That was like 2004, 2005. So that was the last like Doom project. And that was pretty horrible because they tried to do a lot of first person with the shooting in that movie. It was just like, eh, not working so much. A little too, uh, too strict of a interpretation of a video game into a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, but I, I am kind of interested in seeing this because if you don't know about the franchise, the basic story is... We're in the future. Uh, humans have started a base on Mars. There's a way to get from Earth to Mars almost instantaneously, and some of this technology has somehow opened up a gate to hell that was on Mars, and you have to go to Mars and defeat hell. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah, it's a pretty cool concept, I mean, if you ask me. And, and it's just going to look even better and better with all the new graphics. And I wonder if they're going to keep it the same straight up, you know, just shoot them up, or if they're going to add some other elements to it, so maybe some survival horror elements to it that haven't always been there. Uh, I look at the Dead Space games, and that was one of my favorite survival horror games of all time, and maybe they'll bring some of those elements because they are pretty similar, you know, hell's coming out, <laughs> you know, so the, it, it, I'll, be, I'll be very curious to see what's going to go on with that, but th it is supposed to be released within the next year or two, so yeah, look out for that. But, you know, let us know what you think about the new game, Doom game. Are you a really big fan of the Doom franchise? Do you want to see more games, or do you think they should have left it alone? Hit us up in comments down below. Of course, at WordsMyFace on Twitter, WordsMyFace at gmail.com, and, of course, Google Plus and Facebook. We're there. We're everywhere. You can't miss us. Well, you can, but that's because you're not looking. Why aren't you looking? That doesn't make any sense. You better be looking because there might be a Chewbacca chainsaw on your... Anywhere. <laughs> no one expects a Chewbacca chainsaw. But yeah, so I think that uh, that about does it for us for the night. As always, I am Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan. You. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. We are going to headbang our way out of this joint. Or are we? Right. We are. <laughs> Thank you.
on, everybody? I always get so dizzy after that. <laughs>